My kids have not seen this treehouse yet. I can't wait to show them and show you their reaction, especially when you check out the coolest part, the trap door. Howdy partner, my name is Mr. Greg, and on this channel, we walk you through empowering DIY projects one step at a time. For today's video, we are gonna show you how to make an awesome treehouse playground like the one that you just saw and I haven't even seen yet. So I'm sure it was awesome because I have a good vision in my mind of what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna instill the confidence that this project can be completed by you. And maybe not it won't be exactly, exactly the same as what we're going to do, but it'll give you a ton of ideas and we're gonna walk you through it. So what we're going to do, as you already saw in the little preview, is we are gonna build a playground tree house here and we're gonna incorporate some things we already have. We're gonna incorporate this house. We're gonna go ahead and paint that. Then we're gonna put a rock wall on the front. And the coolest thing, which you haven't seen yet, is we're gonna put a trap door right in the middle of the tree house. So the girls are gonna love the trap door. It's a pretty simple project, not a ton of money, and it just takes a little bit of hard work. So we'll walk you through step by step by step. Now, in general, for the dimensions, we went with an eight foot by about seven foot structure. At the end of the video, I will provide a list of all the supplies that we got, all the wood, all the measurements, all dimensions, and you can go ahead and screenshot that and use that if you wanna do this or if you wanna suit it to your own space. So the first step you need to do, which we're about to do, is gonna be to set those first posts. So setting the posts, what are we gonna do? We've got four corner posts, as well as one post right in the middle, which is gonna to help to support that rock wall that we're going to build. Now for the structure, we wanna use all eight foot dimensional lumber. So we wanna be a little less than eight feet so that we've got perfect width and we can trim it down. So what we did first is went ahead and measured out eight feet, 96 inches. So we're gonna go at about 90 to 93 into the dot where we're gonna dig our holes. So we're gonna dig the holes down, add some concrete, we'll level them out, and then the fun part of the project will get, will get started as we start to actually put this playground tree house together. We're gonna to make sure that this tree is right in the middle of it. So that's something we should definitely do. If you have a nice tree, kind of put it in the middle of it. We're gonna show you how we frame around that. We're gonna be using this other thing that we have and it is gonna be so much fun. So stay tuned and keep posted. We'll walk you right through. All right, we got all those holes dug. Use this cool electric auger. We have another video on the channel about this, but you don't need this fancy contraption. You can just use a good old fashioned shovel and or a post hole digger. So we got the hole dug. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that four by four into the hole. Now I've already dropped the other four by fours in and I know it looks a little complicated with all those two by four braces that we have, but that's just to help make sure we're perfectly square and center. You could just start concreting them in without all these support brackets. I just wanna make sure that we're really, really level and really square. So measure it off. If you want to, tack them together. And then in just a second, we'll start going ahead and adding the concrete. If you wanna come over here real quick, you can see our hole. So you wanna make sure that the hole's about eh, 18, 20 inches deep at least. If you go 12, it's probably a little shallow. Although, you know, this structure's not really moving, so it'd probably be fine. It's up to you, but uh, let's go ahead and get this set, get some concrete and keep moving along. All right, we're all square. Again, it's not too important, but it doesn't hurt to do it square. You spend a lot of time on this. Now, all these posts don't have to be the same height because what's gonna happen is we're gonna put our platform at about 60 inches or five feet tall. So we're gonna trim these all off evenly once we're all done. Got the holes dug. So you just wanna take some concrete. And if you wanna premix the concrete, you can, but you definitely don't have to. So just open up your concrete and then you can dump it straight into the hole. You do not need to pre-mix it. And you probably, you know, half a bag or a bag of holes, probably plenty. It's really up to you on personal preference. One bag will be safe. If you wanna come close, you'll see now. So the concrete's right there and we're just gonna go ahead and we're just going to apply don't overflow the hole. And then if you'd like, you can tap it to let that water aerate all the way down the bottom of the concrete with a shovel. Some of them may say it's too wet, could have been a little drier. It'll be fine. We're all set. So we'll let this dry for 
the, we're done with the work for the weekend. Come on back in a couple days and we will proceed on to really making this treehouse playground awesome. I can't wait. The concrete is all dry and we're now ready to start assembling the actual structure. So we talked earlier that we're gonna make this about five feet tall. So you wanna figure out on which corner is gonna be your tallest corner and you're gonna start there at that five feet or the shortest, depending on exactly what you want the max height to be. But basically your ground's not necessarily perfectly level. So what you're going to do is start at one corner, measure from the ground to where you wanna mark or cut. Then you're gonna take a straight edge, piece of wood or whatever, get a helper, and you're gonna hold it up at the top of that cut and make sure you're level and use it to mark your next cut. So we've done that and we worked the way around and we figured out where the marks are gonna be for all the cutting. In terms of sawing these fence posts, you can use a hand saw, you can use a reciprocating saw, a circular saw, it really is up to you. I am actually using a chain pole saw, which is probably not the best product for this, but it makes quick work of it. So try your best to have an accurate cut, wear your eye protection, but just go ahead and get where you wanna to go to and you're gonna Okay, so we got a nice cut there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the process of actually attaching those header boards. We're gonna measure from side to side. And you just, the only thing you wanna think about is where's your front going to be? Because you're gonna overlap with the front. You'll see what we're talking about in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and measure these two, cut it, and then we'll get it attached. Once you've measured twice, you wanna cut once. Remember, double check those measurements. So we're just gonna go ahead, you should have on your protective glasses, and go ahead and cut the size. All cut the side. So then you're just gonna put a little outdoor wood screw on here. And you're just gonna use that to make sure it's level with the top of your posts and make sure the whole thing is level. And then you're just gonna tack it in. And that's just gonna hold it for just a minute. And I'll show you the big laggers we're gonna to use to hold it in. Once you've got all those ends kind of tacked up there with those outdoor two and a half inch screws, we're then gonna use these timber lock four inch bolts. They're, they're like lag screws. They replace three inch lag screws, but these are really, really neat and very strong. So you can put one or two in each joint. I'm gonna use one in each joint. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put in a couple more of the outdoor screws just for good measure. But you'll see that these go in very smoothly and they provide a great hold. The capacity on this uh, playground treehouse structure is gonna be more than one of those lightweight structures that you might see at the store. But I'm not an engineer, I don't know the exact weight. So if you're not comfortable with it or you want it studied, go ahead and do that, but there's gonna be plenty of strength to it. So you're gonna kinda of get started. Then drive that nice and in, and that's gonna hold that really, really good forever. And I'll put in a couple more other screws as well. So we're gonna do that on all the points, and then, Next time we come out, we're going to put in the joist hangers and the joist and really start making this into a structure. As you can see, it's starting to come along. This tree house is going to be awesome. The girls are out here playing. Are you guys excited about this? Yeah! You excited? I'm yeah. Over here. All right, everyone is excited. Stay tuned. We're finishing up. We are now ready to start hanging the joist hangers. So, this process is going to be figuring out exactly how you want to space them. Typically, you're going to be about 16 inches on center from one joist hanger to the next. However, you can extend a little bit probably here. We're not really going for structural, you know, super loads where it's a kid's play structure. And we'll, we'll also wanna make sure that there's enough of a gap in between two of them to put in that trap door that we're going to do. So for the trap door, you probably wanna be closer to 18 to 20, maybe even a little bit push a little more, but 16 is a good number for everything else. Now you wanna figure out which way you plan on having your top rails going to go this way then you'd want your joists to go how we are. If you want them to run that way, then you do your uh, joists the other way. So it really depends on how you want to do that. So we figure out how we want, we want the flat end facing out so it looks nice and clean when you look at the flat end of the deck boards. And then we've measured out where we want everything. So we're gonna go ahead and measure out to that 16 inches on center. Now this one is a little wider because we're, this is kind of where we're probably gonna do a trap door. And then you're gonna take just a scrap of your two by six. You can nail a board on top of it and then you're gonna center that on that mark and you're gonna hold it right there. So what this is going to do is this is gonna give you a spot to get your two by six hangers. You can get these at any hardware store and you're gonna put it up underneath here 
and I'll have you come over real close, little hanger right here. So on that, hang, on that, sorry, this little notch there. So that notch, you actually hit it with the hammer and it will hold it in place. So now you can go ahead and drive in your nails and make sure you're perfectly level. So we're gonna go and start driving in the nails. The nails that we're using are gonna be inch and a half joist hanger nails. You can find these in a hardware store. These are gonna be better, unless you're using structural screws, you wanna use regular screws because they could shear off. These will bend a little, but you wanna have these nice strong joist hanger nails. And you're just gonna go ahead and get started on this side. And I'll kind of show you something really quick as we do this, but we're gonna drive in the one, okay? Making sure it stays level. But then what you can do is once you make sure you're straight, you wanna to come to this side and you can also do that same tap to hold it in place on this side. And then we're gonna drive in the rest of the nails. Once you've got your joist hanger nice and nailed in there, then you're going to measure between the two and you're gonna cut a post to size or a two by six rather. And then you wanna come in from the top and if it fits, great. If not, you can take your, your uh, hammer and just nail it down a little bit and make sure it's perfectly flush. Once you've got all hung up, then you're gonna take your nails and they actually go in diagonally into this joist hanger. And you're just gonna tap them in So we're nice and secure. We are starting so, to attach the supports for that rock wall and it's coming along great. So a couple quick tr tricks along here. First, we put this board here, just this extra two by four. And what we're doing is we're butting the boards against here to give a nice straight line on this side. Then on this side, they're gonna be a little, a little uneven, but we'll trim those off there. So it's gonna be nice and straight. So to attach it, you're just gonna go ahead and grab your deck board. You're gonna hold it up and then you wanna screw it in. And that's it. We're going to put two screws in each post, work all the way, all way down, and then we'll take you up top and start attaching the top deck. Attaching the top deck is very similar to that rock wall we were just showing you. So we just slapped another board up here real quick just to stop as a, uh, as a stopper. And then we can just slide it up. And we're not doing too much of a gap. We're keeping these pretty tight. So once you get that done, then you can go ahead and just attach the hardware. No problem at all. Now, the hardware we're using for the top is these two inch deck force exterior wood screws, and then we're using two and a half inch exterior screws for the rock wall. You can really use anything as long as it's at least two inches and it's an exterior screw, but this is probably the best way to do it. And we already had some of this on hand. So we're gonna go ahead and finish knocking out the rest of these deck boards, and then we're gonna trim around that tree. As you can see, the deck is nearly complete. We've trimmed around that tree that we talked about to get a little room to grow. And we've also put up the house that was in here so we're gonna get that all attached down with some L brackets. And then we're gonna figure out where would be best for that trap door. I'm thinking right here in the middle where we have a space between the rafters. So let me show you how that's done. We've also started to put up the safety rail and we'll show you how that's done as well. I've labeled these three as a location for the trap door. And we're gonna put the hinges on this side and have it open this way. We're gonna plunge cut it, but before we do that, we're gonna go from the underside and attach two boards that are gonna hold those three together. So we're gonna make it three wide, which should be plenty wide for a child, and we're gonna attach it together with a couple support boards. So from underneath, you can see that we found those three and then we supported them with three support beams. We're now gonna go up from above and do a plunge cut to cut that piece out. We want it to be right outside of the joists. This trap door is awesome. So we went ahead and cut it. We put a screw in here just to be able to hold it. And then what we did is we attached a couple pieces of scrap two by six that are going to hold it up. So now what we'll do to finish it off is we're going to sit it back where it belongs. It's going to rest on those two by sixes. And then we're going to attach the two hinges, drill a hole and put a rope knot in there. And when you're walking around, it'll look like normal. It's strong as can be. And it's going to be pretty cool, neat secret part of this playground. For the safety railing, it's really up to you. We're doing it at about 24 inches tall, which means to account for the extra length that we have down here on the joist or the header, you're cutting the pieces at about 30 and a half inches, and then we're running a two by four. So you're just gonna take those pieces, put them up, bolt them in, and then you can run two by four across the top. And if you'd like, you can also go ahead and run a rope through the middle, which we're going to do in certain sections. So it's really coming together. Stay tuned.
Okay, we are wrapping up this project and it's coming out awesome. So we're now doing the rock wall. It's kind of a lot of fun. So these pieces I just bought them on Amazon. I'm not sponsored by a company, but they seem to be pretty good quality. They have a little doohickey here that you drill a hole, nail it into the back, and then you just attach these on with provided Allen wrench. It's pretty easy, it's pretty quick. So we're doing that and then we're gonna go over to the side and show you our dropping rope ladder we put in. So for the rope ladder, I found two of the joists and we just put in these two threaded O-rings here. And then we have the ladder that's pretty neat because it falls all the way down. And it's kind of a neat little trick. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well, but it's just a nice little toy that your kids can play with. There it goes, all the way down. And they can pull it up and keep mom and dad out. We also went ahead and installed a tiny little ladder that goes up to that trap door, which is pretty awesome. All right, so I know you want a tour. Let's go check it out. Well, there she is, all done and looking awesome. So here's the around outside. We have the trap door, the rope ladder, and we attach that house up there. And then we'll also show you, we'll climb up inside. So for the kids, they can go up the rope ladder, they could go up the slide, they could go in the trap door, or I had this ladder thing that you could build something similar. So what we did is we took this ladder and we opened up the side of the playhouse. Again, the dimensions on this are about seven feet by eight feet. I will link all the wood on a list in the video in just a moment. So we have in here the repurposed play structure. Then when they come out, you have a large, you have a large deck area. And we have both the ladder or the sorry, the wood as well as the rope to stop. Although well, you could do more barriers if you wanted to. Then you have a large amount of play area here. You have the rope ladder, the tree that's the center of the tree house, and then everyone's favorite, the trap door. Wow, that's really, really fun. So, pretty awesome. The most important part of all, let's see what the kids think. Okay, it's all done, girls. You ready to check out the yeah. tree house? Yeah. Yeah, all right, let me get ahead of you. I want to see your look on your face. Are you excited? Hey girls, what do you think of your new treehouse? I love it! Is it a lot of fun? Yeah. All right, well, that was actually one of the more fun projects that we do on this channel. Most of them are pretty small, simple projects, but this one's a little bigger. So if you like this project, please subscribe to check out more great home how-to. It'll go from little tips and tricks to everyday home problems to big projects like this, but all stuff that you definitely can do. If I can do it, you can too. So right now, as promised, here is a picture of all the uh, materials for this project. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, put it in a comment box. Remember to like, comment, support, and subscribe. And remember, as I just said, with all these projects, if I can do it, you can too. Thanks for watching.